Hey, Cypher here. Today I'm asking a simple question. Whatever happened to the ERA? The ERA, or the Equal Rights Amendment, is something that the U.S. still has yet to ratify. It is an incredibly simple amendment to the Constitution, focusing mostly on women's rights. You see, according to our Constitution, women still do not possess the same rights as men. In fact, they merely possess the right to vote. No other right has officially been extended to them within the Constitution. It's kind of odd to think that you could still constitutionally pass a law saying that women are not allowed to be in public gatherings, speak in a rally, write for a newspaper, or own a gun. Seriously. The ERA sought to elevate women constitutionally to the status of men, but it has failed many times. How? Why? Why isn't it a problem now? Well, it is, but only sort of. The amendment has three simple lines that would have done all of this. It says, Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. The Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. This amendment shall take effect two years after the date of ratification. That's all it is. Now would you believe that this was proposed in 1923 and has made it into Congressional Committee nearly every year since then and it still hasn't passed? Surely it's all those misogynistic congressmen. Well, no. In fact, in many cases, the strongest opponents to the ARA have been women's rights groups. Now everything seems weird and convoluted. Well, that's history for you, never giving a simple one-sentence answer. So enough with the preamble, let's get to the story. Suffragettes originally proposed the amendment on the 75th anniversary of the Seneca Falls Convention, which had basically started the suffrage movement, at least in America. The 19th Amendment was already ratified and in effect at the time, so it was foreseeable to get this one passed as well. Some of the more radical suffragettes were supportive, but other women's rights groups actually protested the amendment. They had fought for certain laws that gave women more leniency in the workplace than men, and the amendment would remain move these things. Congress saw no reason to even try to pass the amendment until the late 1940s. After World War II, the Congress was swinging closer and closer to passing the bill. Ike was the first president to officially support the ratification of the bill, and every president until Reagan would do so as well. When the 1960s came into being, there already was a great deal of support in Congress. Second wave feminism began with the period and really pushed for the ERA. Some even saw it as an extension of the civil rights movement of the decade. Things were getting better for the ERA. In 1972, after a great deal of fighting, the ERA finally passed both houses of Congress. It was ready to be ratified by the states, with one stipulation. It had to be done by mid-1979. Those seven years would become the hardest years the ERA ever experienced. At first, 30 states jumped immediately on, leaving eight more to go. An additional five would join in throughout the seven years, but no further. The ratification became a political mess. There was a huge backlash in the Deep South, as well as the interior Southwest, which never joined in. The initial ratification seemed to be doing well, though. Interestingly enough, it was a woman who led the charge to stop the ratification. Her name was Phyllis Schlafly. She urged that women would stand to lose a great deal more than they could gain from passing the ERA. This brought many women's groups against it. This also gave many hardcore conservatives the excuse they needed to oppose the amendment. The uproar now became clearly opposed rather than for it. Five states actually rescinded their ratification. In a desperate last-ditch attempt, Congress approved a later ruled unconstitutional extension on the deadline for ratification. This didn't help anything, and the needed 38 never came to be. Since that deadline, the bill has been reintroduced into Congress every year, but has yet to make it out of committee, save for once early on. We are avoiding the equal rights debate for the time being. At first, this amendment seems like it should be an obvious good thing, but I don't think most women actually would want it to be passed once they understood and considered it thoroughly. What Schlafly was talking about is still a problem. Women would be obliged to sign up for the draft, no longer listed as dependents when they are stay-at-home moms, and would have to accept equal treatment in the court system. Things like child custody hearings and batterment charges would have to be considered on an equal plane, which they are not currently. Men cannot shirk these things, and they do not really get any benefits for that. 
DARA would not change much in terms of the current state of affairs, merely the possibility of repression. Women, for the most part, have completely equal rights under the law. They just have to accept the responsibilities that come with it. But there is the possibility that those rights could be taken away, and constitutionally taken away. So the question is, do you want the ERA to be ratified? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.